Well, we are in 2024, all right, because there's been two months of reading and I haven't read a lot. But I have read something and I definitely know that there's a new year coming because I've read so many great things this month that I'm very excited to talk to you about. Hello beautiful bookworms, my name is Katerina and welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my February wrap-up for all of you guys. So first of all I want to apologize if you hear any uh, noises. My neighbors apparently are renovating the house and chose this precise moment to start letting me know that they're doing so. So this is what we have. I am going through these books fairly quickly since I haven't read a lot of actual books. I've read some mangas, I've read two books. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I have to talk to you about is At Home with the Horrors by Sammy Scott. So this is a 14th tale short story collection, uh, which presents, if I did my math correctly, 13 short stories and one novella at the end of the book. And all of these are horror, all of these are very creative and very... I think I could say, I don't know if there's any story going on in the summer, but all of these gave me such chilling vibes that could be really great stories to read in the cold weather. With the winter finishing, you might have a little bit of a chance to still read this before the spring, but they're really great for any given time of the month uh, or of the year, as I was going to say. They're also great for Halloween, so if you don't ever read for Halloween, you could read these. I really enjoy Sammy Scott's writing. Um, these are stories, so you don't have a lot of, you know, um, space for them to be entirely developed. Some of these I would like for them to be developed more. Some of them were really great, but what I really liked in his tales was the way that he wrote them. The lines, the sentences, the way that he finished or started a tale were really really engrossing, were really spine chilling and I think that if you like horror this short story collection could be for you. And fairly quickly I have read a volume of Witch Hat Atelier, this is volume 11, this is by Kamome Shirahama and as for all of the other volumes I really love this. I am very sad that there's so little volumes of this coming out time after time Time after time. I'm sorry. Um, but this one was really cool. It was it was fairly short actually from the other ones, and there wasn't a lot of action, but there was a lot of friendship building, there was a lot of magic, there was a lot of beautiful art. So let me see if I can make you see some of the look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I really love how Kamome Shirahama writes and details and styles this. It's a beautiful art style. I really like Witch Hat Atelier. I think it's just such a dark but also such a poetic and beautiful tale of friendship, love and um, bravery and magic, you know, <laughs> um, that I really, really like. And if you haven't read Witch Hat Atelier, this actually won an Eisner Award. Uh, I don't know when it was. I don't know when it was, but you know, you should, you should, which Hatelier is really great. I do have a review on the volumes that I've read previously to this one. So very excited to finish this and actually doing a comprehensive review on the Witch Hat Atelier, but it has my highest recommendation. Then I read an entire series of manga this month, which is because there was only three volumes of it. So I reread Solist in a Cage Volume 1 that I had actually read previously in January. This is by Shiro Mori Moriya? Moriya? I don't know. Solace in a Cage Volume 1, so I reread this. And then I, re I read for the first time Sol Solace in a Cage Volume 2. And I read for the first time as well Solace in a Cage Volume 3, which just came out and just finished this entirely beautiful, dramatic and breathtaking family saga. So if you don't know anything about Solace in a Cage, this is basically about this city or country, not entirely sure, which is sort of a prison city or country. So everyone that goes there have the maximum penalty for stupid reasons sometimes, for accurate reasons for other times, 
And the people that go there know they will never be able to escape. This is a walled, high up city with a lot of drones and robots that are mechanized and armed to, at any given time, kill people if they do something that looks wrong. Um, and so the people that live there start breeding families and just surviving as humans do in society because they know they'll never get out. And so children are being born there, living there, dying there. And it's a place where if you go out alone at any given time of the day, you will be murdered. If you are a child, you'll be murdered, raped or worse. And if you're a woman, also it's not great for you. If you go in pairs it could be cool but you don't know what's going to happen because you have since people that just stolen bread to survive to people that actually are mass murderers and children rapists so there's a lot of trigger warnings for heavy content violence and um murdering a lot of um on page references on rape or dismemberments or something like that. There's a lot of blood in the scene and even though the fight scenes in here are pictured as dance moves and as something beautiful in terms of art style, it's kind of very, very wrong in other ways. Um, but I was, I'm going to do a review about this so I don't want to take a lot of time telling you why this is amazing. You will see it in my review, possibly hopefully. But this is a story about Chloe. She is our main character and she's the, the little girl here. And she and her little baby brother are orphaned. So Chloe takes care of him and the only reason that they survive is because they have some neighbors that bring food to themselves and leave some pieces to these children. So we don't know if their parents just abandoned them or if they just went out and searched for food and got killed. We don't know what happened. But she's the only provider and care of her brother. And and just because other people give them food because she cannot go out or she will be killed. And one day she knows that the, the neighbors across from her are going to attempt an escape from the prison, which will mean that they will never receive food again and her brother and her will probably die. So she decides to attempt to escape with them. But something in the escape goes wrong and she gets turned on the other side of the wall with the escapees so she can escape successfully but her brother a baby brother stays on the inside of the wall and so it's a family drama in which she is going to attempt to come back to this prison city to actually rescue her brother and see how he's doing and chloe as our main character is such a beautiful main character and the art style of this is something like i've never seen before it's just It's just, there are panels in here that are absurd with how amazing they are. It's just, I'm trying not to show you anything that could be too sensitive. But it's, it's amazing. It's just amazing. This arting style is like nothing that I've ever seen before. You have panels that are not as well focused on, and so the art is not as good, but then you have page panels that I would wish I could have put all over my house because they're just so beautiful and it's and it's it's a story like I've never seen before I love the entirety of the story I loved the ending I love the beginning I loved everything so if you're looking for a short manga series to read Solace in a Cage is definitely what you should be reading at the moment and then finally I have a book that I actually read this month and it's by a Portuguese author I'm just trying to put this in place as it should. Okay, so this is by João Tordo, which is currently actually my favorite Portuguese author. He's amazing. And the name of this is O Nome Que a Cidade Esqueceu, or translated to English, the name that the city forgot. And it is such a beautiful novel. This is about this girl, Natasha. She's a refugee in 1991, New York, and she comes from a place near Russia, which is not actually named, but is a place that is in war with Russia. Um, and so she comes to be uh, like a bomb goes out in her yard and she gets a stuttering and she is traumatized for life. And so her dad is like, no, you're going to survive. You're going to get a refugee status and you're going to go to America. And so here she is 
1991, New York, and she doesn't know anything about English, she doesn't know anything about life, and she's living with a refugee status, and in this city that never sleeps, and that doesn't smell that great, but it's also really pretty at some times, but very, very ugly at others. And it's her story and how she comes across this very strange person called George B. And how she gets a job by reading the shut-in, the phone list. And it's way deeper than you could ever imagine when we are talking about this sort of premise. It is a growing up story, but it's also a story of fear. It's also a story of going away from the place that you love and the people that you love to someone that you've and somewhere and to someone that you've never seen before it's how you can construct a life even when everything has been taken away from you it's how the human being prevails and also how the human being decays at the same time and it's just incredible to see the in-depth character study of this work and the magnitude of the feelings that Joan Torres puts into work here. Natasha as a main character is incredible. I She's just so great. She has this disability or stuttering and she works with it and she just never stops fighting for what she wants and what she believes even though some things have consequences. And it's just so interesting to see someone so different from us and in different circumstances from us and you see this story about this other human being that is shut in and hasn't seen anyone in a while and he just wants the phone list to be read to him for a very specific reason and you don't know what that reason is until you do and this is a story that breaks your heart but also pulls you back together in a way and i just love the attention given to love to fear to being human the attention that is put on being human and how loneliness kills us but sometimes being close to other people will also leave their marks and very very deep and positive or negative marks on us and it's beautiful it's beautiful i absolutely love this book i have read other two books by him one also a novel and the other a uh, non-fiction and I can say with all my heart that I really like this I really want to read everything that he wrote because he writes about the human condition as no other I'm pretty sure that this is going to be if it hasn't been already translated to English because it's a new release because I do think some of his works are translated in English and if you are able to or if you know how to read Portuguese this is an author that I will recommend to most of people. I think he's a great author. I think that if you are at all human, you will resonate with at least one part of the things that he has to say about human condition and this life. And this story is really great. I really loved it. I am very happy that I read it in this month. So yeah, guys, a really big month of really great stories to tell. And that's all that I have to tell you today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, leave a like or subscribe. And tell me in the comments down below what was the best book that you've read in February or if you've been reading, how are you? Stuff like that, just so we can get to connect a little bit more. That's going to be all for today and happy readings to you all. Bye!